All right, everybody. Hopefully that gets people in the mood for this ball game today. Game number three on the 1987 American League as played. Every game played out, not simulated. 1987 American League season. Stratomatic Super Advanced. And uh, this game is the Boston Red Sox at the Milwaukee Brewers. We've got our Milwaukee Brewer colored dice, or at least as close as I could get to it. Starting pitchers for today's game for the Brewers, it is Teddy Higuera. And for the Red Sox, it is Bob Stanley. This is one where Roger Clemens, I believe, was holding out during the spring of 87. And so he was late getting to spring training, so that's why he was not able to start the season, you know, as an opening day starter like you would normally do. That's your lineup, your benches, and your bullpen. I've made cards for everyone except for Dave Sachs. I think he had like three at-bats. So if I get down to having to use him, I do have him up on the computer, and I can, you know, get the information off of that. Ballpark effects. Singles are 1 to 6. Home runs are 1 to 5. Pitcher-catcher quotient, Bob Stanley, minus 3. Mark Sullivan, 0, so it's a minus 3 effect. Teddy Higuera is a minus one. Bill Schroeder is a plus one, so it's a net zero for Teddy Higuera. So I've got this here, and I'll keep it here just briefly while I get the cards and everything all set up. Tabby is here with me. She is resting quietly, just enjoying the evening. And uh, let me see if I can't uh, make sure we got the focus on this thing. And get the It's almost like a cloudy thing on my... Maybe the lens of my phone is like that. I have no idea why, but hopefully it's okay now. And again, also thinking this is enough light, should be enough light. I can see everything looks like it's pretty good as I'm looking through the phone. So we'll go with it. Like I said, don't have the expensive camera I'm using my smartphone as my camera. And it'll just have to do. All right, so there's, like I said, if you want to take a, if you want to pause the video or whatever and look at it and analyze it and criticize it and whatever, that's what they've got. Uh, Brewers are carrying one extra player than the Red Sox as far as uh, bullpen because Basio, who is a starter, is not going to start for a few days. So I've added him to the list, and he did pitch some relief the first couple of games. So that's why they have one extra player there. All right, so I will move this off to the side, and if I need to bring it back, I will. So I think everything is where I need it to be. Make sure the line score is showing and Dale Swain's batting line is showing. I may have to raise this up just a hair to make sure. Every, and I can't, like I said, that's the one thing bad about recording is you can't see it ahead of time. I see Gantner, but I don't see Swain. Now I see Swain, but I'm losing a little bit of the... Um, line score here so let's see if we can do something this way that seems to be better so we'll go with it not as close to the cards as I would like but hopefully it's you know close enough where you still see everything so Teddy Higuera is going to finish the warm-up tosses and Wade Boggs will be the first batter and let's see, I better not do it that way because I lose some of the peripherals. So let me, well, I can go this way. That's what I can do. I do have room to go this way, so I think I can do it this way. Whoop, backwards. Don't want to do that. Had the same problem with the Texas-Baltimore game I did earlier. Just this newer setup, trying to get everything where I think people can see it and whatnot. Fix the focus one more time. I think that's the best I can do. Now, I will try to turn the lamp on and see if any extra light will help. I was going to do that for the Oriole game, but then I've played it without the extra lamp light. But I don't know if that hinders or helps or whatnot. But uh, I think I'll leave the lamp light on this one, and we'll try it that way. I got the game up on the computer. I will score it as we are playing it. And just like with the Oriole-Texas game I did earlier, I will print the box score at the end of the game so that you can see it. 
with all the totals and whatnot. Milwaukee won the game in real world 5-1. to one. Again, one of the April 6 games on opening day, 1987. And we're underway. Teddy Higuera facing Wade Boggs. 2-8 for Boggs against the lefty. He's going to ground to Dale Swain at short. And there's one away. So off to a good start is Higuera. In the real game, Wade Boggs let off the game with a single, but uh, this game, Teddy Higuera was able to keep Boggs off the bases. 3-5 for Barrett against Higuera. The lefty is a solid single, so it's Barrett who gets the base hit. So a single for Marty Grennan Barrett. He will be held. He would need a 4 to get the lead, but if he gets the lead, it's a 19 minus 2 would be a 17, but he's got to roll a 4. And he's got an asterisk here, so if you don't hold him, he gets the lead automatically. So you, you don't, you know, you're, you're compelled to hold him. So he's going to try to get the lead with a 4. He does not, but it's a 2, which means it's a chance of... And let's pull out the rule books just so you won't think I'm pulling things out of my arse. Let's look at the rule book on page 13, section 29.2, letter C. When runner is attempting to steal, if the 20-side die is a 2, there's a possible balk. Refer to the pitcher's balk rating. Roll the 20-side die again. If the number rolled is less than or equal to the balk rating, a balk has occurred. If the number is higher than the balk rating, the runner dies back safely, but the runner has failed to achieve the lead. All right, so whether it's a balk or not, He's gonna. He won't be able to get the lead. Now, these 87 cards with the pitchers do not have the balk ratings, but I do have them on the computer. So let me look at Higuera's balk rating and get that for you. He's a balk rating of 3. Wild pitch 3, balk 3. So I'm going to roll the d20. If we get a 3 or less, he has balked. 4 or higher, he did not balk, and Barrett does not get the lead. No balk, and Barrett does not get the lead. I mean, he's held, but he can't go anywhere. And that brings up Bill Buckner. Higuera to Buckner. 6-6 six, six against a left-hander is a single to right field for Billy Buckner. Barrett's a 15 was being held, and that's going to make him a 14. Right fielder arm is Glenn Braggs. He's a minus 2, so that makes that a 12. But then you get plus 2 going from right field to third base, so that's back to a 14 again. And if you throw through, well, Buckner's not going to take the extra base the way he hobbles. So he only runs an eight. I'm not letting him take the extra base. So we're going to throw to third, see if we can get Barrett. It's a one to 14. He's safe. And he's out. So Barrett is out trying to go to third. It's going to go nine to five, Dolly Parton style. And they throw him out. How about that? Glenn Bragg. Glenn no brags, just facts. Throws him out. And we'll put this on the computer to represent that. All right, so he's thrown out. Buckner is that stays at first. He only runs at eight. I'm not letting him take any extra bases. No way, no how. Here's Jim Rice, left fielder. Havoc roll for Higuera. Nothing happening. Buckner not being held. Higuera 5-2 to a right-hander as a fly to center. And that's going to end the inning. So the Red Sox had a promising start there with a couple of hits. But the bullet from Glenn Braggs to third baseman Paul Molitor put the kibosh on that. And we go to the bottom of the first. Boston nothing. And Milwaukee coming to bat. And Paul Molitor will lead things off for the Brew Crew against Bob Stanley. It's a 6-5, and that's a pop-up to first. So Molitor will pop it right up to Bill Buckner for out number one. That brings up Robin Yount. 
And for Yount, that is a 3 4 a ground ball to short. Spike Owen will throw him out. Two up and two down for Bob Stanley. How about that? Here's Glenn Braggs. Had that good throw to third base. Top of the inning, 2-7, and he's going to single to right field. So Glenn Braggs having himself quite an inning. Trying to make things happen. Uh, let's see, remember, pitcher-catcher quotient is a minus three for Boston. So if he got the lead, he'd be down 2-11. and 11. And I don't know if that's good enough to try to go up or not. It's an 11. You got Brock on base with first base. They're holding him on first. It opens up a hole for Brock, so they're going to keep Braggs there. So Braggs will not go anywhere. And with two outs, here comes Greg Crocodile Brock. And he remembers when Rock, when Rock was young. Uh, 210, and that is a ground ball third base A, so it's going to be fielded by Boggs. He'll throw to Barrett at second for the fielder's choice, and the inning is over. So nothing doing for the Brew Crew. A lone single by, Bra by uh, Braggs comes to naught. Wait a minute, I didn't move Braggs. It was Brock that was batting 210. My bad. Scramble to first, not to third. So we're going to say that's not going to be a fielder's choice. That's going to be a three ground out because the first baseman is not going to throw it to second with the third out. He's just going to take the bag himself. So let me delete that last play out of the computer and fix it. That's a good thing about the undo button on the computer screen. And now I can just put a ground out to first so that because I'm keeping all stats. The computer's going to keep all the stats for me, fielding and everything. So I want to be accurate. So that's going to do it for the Brew Crew. We go to the second inning. Still no score. And now Higuero will be facing the designated hitter, Don Baylor. You get a 2-8 for Baylor against the lefty. He's going to strike out. So Higuero puts the K on... Don Baylor, out number one, and here is Dewey Evans. Dewey Evans. And one interesting note about Don Baylor, he had the distinction of playing on three consecutive World Series teams for three different teams. In 86, he was on the Red Sox, their World Series teams. This year in 87, he starts on the Red Sox, but gets traded to the Twins, so he's on the Twins World Series team, and in 88, he joins the Oakland A's for their World Series team. So I don't think anybody else has ever done I don't. I didn't look it up, but I don't think anybody else has ever done that. It's just a quirky kind of feat. Here's Dewey Evans, 2-5 against a left-hander. 2-5 is a ball. I'm sorry, it gets a left-hander over here. 2-5 is a ballpark blast. Ballpark blast. And home runs are 1-5, to five, but that's an 11, so it's just a deep fly to left field. And that's one, oh, uh, two away, rather. Two down. And it'll bring up Hindu, Dave Henderson. He, of course, well-known in the 86 playoffs for hitting the home run off of Donnie Moore that propelled the Red Sox from certain defeat into contention again. 2-9 against the lefty, but this time he's going to strike out. And so Teddy Higuera has a 1-2-3 inning. And this is the kind of thing, this kind of replay, I'm, I, I'm doing, a, most of the games are going to be recorded. Very few are going to be live. Most are going to be recorded. And it's just, because uh, I want to go slower, I don't want to have to keep up with chat and stuff like that. I really want to enjoy the, the process and uh, take my time and whatnot. So, that's why I like to do it this way. Just kind of, I'm not in any rush. I'm just going to go slow. Even though there's a lot of games we played, I'm not worried about that. I'll finish whenever I finish. So, all right, here is Billy Joe Robado. 410 for Stanley, and that's a 1 to 11 home run. That is an 11. And Robado has weak power, though, against righty, so will only be a single. Only will be a single. Will not be a home run because he has weak power. So Robodeau got into one, but he couldn't get enough air under it and just went a long drive to the wall, and he's so slow he can only get a single out of it. He, of course, will not be held. And here's Rob Bombardier, 
Speaking of home runs, Rob Bobadier, he's a home run strikeout artist. 5-11, and that is a fly ball right field X. That is Dewey Evans. He's a 1-E-2. So, as you might expect, Dewey Evans, quite the gold glover type right fielder, even in this advanced stage of his career. So, 1-1 and a one is a... Oh, I'm looking on the infield Let's go over here. 1-1 one and a one is an F-1. And F-1, that means the runner's going to advance on F-1s. So even though this ball is going to be caught, he, the Robodo, as slow as he is, it's so deep into the corner that he's going to make it to second base. The error chance for Evans is a 2. So the only way he makes an error is 3, 16, or 18. And he makes the play, but Robodo is going to move up. That's what the definition of the F1 is, is a deep fly. It's like a fly ball A and advanced. So it will be a fly out to right, but Robodo will take second base. Don't know how realistic that was, but uh, apparently Rob Deere with his power, uh, well, that was off the X chart anyway, so it was just a matter of an unlucky evil D20 rolling a number one again. I've already made my case for why that's, you know, a little bit quirky. All right, so runner at second, one out. Bill Schroeder, the catcher. Stanley. 6-8, and that's a single to center field, but Billy Joe Robito only runs at a 9. He will not even try it. Henderson is a minus 2 arm and less than 2 outs, so he's just going to play station to station right here. Second and third, or first and third, rather. With only one out, Schroeder not being held. He only runs at a nine. And here's Gantner. Red Sox looking to turn the double play and get out of this. If Stanley can induce a ground ball. Get a 2-7, and that is a ground. Oh, I'm sorry, I was looking at 2-8. 7 is a single to left field. And that's going to score Robodeau. And the Brewers break through one to nothing. Schroeder will stop at second. With the ball hit to left, he's not going anywhere. And it's one nothing Brew Crew. I forgot to write the zero here from the previous inning. But it's a single to left field for Jim Gantner. And the Brewers lead it one nothing. Runners first and second. Dale Swain, the shortstop. That's a one. So wild pitch opportunity for Stanley. And I think I haven't checked his wild pitch rating yet. Let's see what that is. He's a four. Balk of zero and a wild pitch of four. No wild pitch. It's blocked by Sullivan, so Stanley will pitch it to Swain. 4-8 switch hitter. Batting left is a 1-19 to double, two stars. So Dale Swain, an RBI double to score Schroeder. Gantner will stop at third because of the two stars. But it's 2 nothing Brewers, and they've got more cooking. Second, third, only one out. And Paul Molitor coming up again. Pop to first, his first time up. The infield is in for the Red Sox. They have to try to choke this runoff. Stanley, 2-9 to Molitor. Ground ball shortstop A. And I'll double check it on the board or in the book, but I'm pretty sure the ground ball shortstop A, the runners have to hold. Second and third, ground ball is a one. Batter out, runner holds. So by playing the infield in, they prevent any further runs up to this point. Still two outs though. And that out was 2-9 which means it went to short. So Spike Owen got it. Checked the runners and throws to Molitor. I'm sorry, throws to uh, Buckner for two outs. So now it's Robin out. First base is open. Glenn Braggs is on deck. Do you have the nerve to walk Robin out? And pitch to Braggs. Yount's a 312 hitter. Braggs 269. Yount 21 home runs. Braggs 13. But Stanley, you wonder about his control, although he has not walked anybody yet. So they're gonna they're gonna give the four free fingers to Robin Yount. Of course, it's 1987, so they have to throw the four wide ones. You can't just motion. They got to go through the pomp and circumstances of three soft, or four soft tosses 
out of the strike zone. And now here's Glenn Braggs with the bases loaded and two outs. Two in. Bob Stanley, if he wants to stay in the game, better get this out. 6-7, and that's a 1-12 to single. That's a 20, though, so it's a liner to short. And the strategy pays off as they get out of the inning. Brewers leave them loaded. They score two, but it could have been a lot worse. At least the Red Sox are still in the game. It's 2 nothing Brewers after two. And Teddy Guerra now is going to get to enjoy a lead. Going to face the bottom of the order, Mark Sullivan, Spike Owen, and Wade Boggs. Check this out here. It looks like everything is still... I'm just hoping it's not too much light with this extra lamp. I guess we'll find out. Like I said, the Oriole game, I played it without the lamp on. This one, I'm playing it with the lamp on. So I guess I'm trying to see which one is better. I don't know. Like I said, when you record, you have no idea what it's going to look like until the thing is over and you take a look at it on your phone. No idea up until then. All right, here is Segura to Sullivan. 6-8, struck him out. Strikeout number three for Teddy Higuera. And that'll bring up the switch hitting shortstop Spike Owen. One five for Owen. He's going to line it to Paul Milder at third base for out number two. Two up and two down for Wade Boggs. Boggs grounded to Swain his first time up. 3-9 for Boggs against a left-hander. 3-9 is a walk. So a two-out walk to Wade Boggs. He's not going to be going anywhere. He's not going to be held. He's just going to be there. And Marty Barrett, who had the first hit of the game, will step in the box to face Segura with Boggs at first and two outs. 3-7, and 3-7 against the lefty is a single two stars. So Wade Boggs will take third. Barrett is two for two. And maybe a two-out rally by the Red Sox. Barrett will have to be held. But with Bill Buckner coming up, they're not going to take a chance of running, out, running themselves out of an inning. They want to let Buckner get a chance to drive home a run. But they got to hold Barrett or he gets the lead automatically. So Higuera to Buckner. 3-7 for Buckner against a left-hander. Ground ball to first A. Now, if we were doing advanced, that plus sign would turn this into a hit. But in super advanced, we ignore it. It's just a ground out to the first baseman, Greg Brock, and that's going to do it. Red Sox come away empty-handed. They get two late, a walk and a hit late, but leave two on. And we go to the bottom of the third. Still two to nothing. Favor the Brew Crew. Stanley back out. We'll be facing Greg Brock, Billy Joe Robodeau, and Rob Deere. Brock is first time up. Grounded to first. 312 against a right hander. He's going to foul out to the catcher Sullivan for out number one. One away, and that's going to send up the DH, Billy Joe Robodeau. He singled his first time up. Scored. Stanley, 6-7, Robodeau, lefty, single two stars. Nobody's on base. It really doesn't matter about stars. It's just a single for Robodeau. He's two for two. How about that? Billy Joe Robodeau hit 194 on the season, but he starts the season off two for two. Go figure. And now, Robodeau not going to be held. And here's Rob Deere. Flute right his first chance. 4-4 four, four for Stanley against a right-hander. Ground ball third base X. That's Boggs. He's a 2-E-16. Maybe a chance to turn two and get out of the inning. A 2-E-16 for Wade Boggs. 2-4 and a four. He is a G-3, so the only play will be at first base. His air rating is a 16 he has to avoid four, three, four, seven, 14, 16, and 18. That is an 11, so he should be good to go. There's no 11 there. But the only play for Boggs is to throw it across the diamond 
to first. So Robodeau will take second on the 5-3 ground out. So with two outs, runner in scoring position, this is a clutch situation for Bill Schroeder, the catcher. He singled his first time up. Stanley, 6-11, and that is a ballpark single check, which is a 1-6, to six, but that's a 7. So it will be a liner to short to end the inning, and Bob Stanley gets out of the mess. So it wasn't easy. As Ringo Starr saying, you know it ain't easy. You know it don't come easy for Bob Stanley. So at the end of three, score is Milwaukee two and the Red Sox nothing. Line score two runs, six hits, no errors for the Brewers. No runs, three hits, no errors for the Red Sox. Higuera has a fatigue of seven. Bob Stanley has a fatigue of six. So as is customary, after the first three inning block, I'm going to stand up and stretch my back a little bit. Check on Tabby. Check on the focus on the phone. Looks like everything's okay. Uh, I was in a I was rear-ended in a car accident back in 2014. Um, went through some physical therapy and whatnot, and uh, finally got back. You know, about a, six months later, back to quote unquote normal but sometimes if I sit for a one of the after effects if I sit for a long time my back does get really stiff so anyway that's that so Higuera be facing Jim Rice to start the fourth 212 for Rice against a left hander is a single to center field there's the Omega thing there but there's no clutch situation nobody's on base and there aren't two outs, so leadoff single for Jim Rice. He will not be held. He will not go anywhere. Will not pass go. Will not collect two hundred dollars. And here is Don Baylor. Al although they made Monopoly nowadays, I guess with inflation you have to get like five hundred dollars or something for passing go. Here's a Gara. Six six Baylor righty six six one to four is a single. That's a nine. It'll be a line out to short. Swain snags it. One away. Baylor gets, uh, Rice gets back to first. One down for Dewey Evans. Evans flew to left his first chance. Higuera, 4-6. That's a walk, so two runners on again for the Red Sox, just like last inning. But this time there's only one out, not two outs, so maybe they got a chance to Put a run on the board finally. Here's Hindu. He struck out his first time. Looking to avoid that fade and also looking to avoid a double play. 5-6 against a right-hander. That's a 1-12 to double. That is a 5 or a 4, depending on how it's laying there. So it will be a double for Dave Henderson. It's assumed to go to center when it's not listed, that 5-6. It's assumed to go to center. And the center fielder is Yount, who's a plus two. So Evans may try to score from first on this. We know Rice is going to score. As a trail runner, Evans was not being held. So he goes from a 12 to a 13. And then the plus two makes it a 15. So one to 15, they're going to send him. And here comes the relay throw from Yount to Swain to the plate. But a one to 15, and he is in there. And he is in there. So it's a... Two run double for Henderson. And Henderson does take third on the throw. So you wonder maybe if the Brewers should have just held onto the ball, but they were trying to get that run. Prevent that tying run, but what they did is they put Henderson at third with less than two outs. Now the infield's got to come in for Mark Sullivan. We got to tie a game just that quickly. Red Sox already scored more than they did in the real game. Higuera to Sullivan. 5-5, five, five, and that's bad news there. Didn't matter if, it was, if he'd have been in second, he still would have scored because it's a single two stars, but that's a one, so it's actually going to be a triple for Mark Sullivan, although he had, he had no triples in real world. 
No triples in real world, so I am going to cut him down to a double. Not going to allow the triple. So it's another double, and the Red Sox take the lead. And that's something the computer does, too. They, they, if a guy doesn't have triples, they tone it down to a double, which I think is wise, because I can't see Mark Sullivan getting a triple. Not as poorly as he runs. Runs at a 1-9. to nine. I don't think anybody that runs less than 10 should be getting a triple. All right. But like I said, that's the beauty of Stratomatic and a lot of these other games. I mean, there are rules to the games, but you can homebrew things and play it how you see fit. And that's what I'm doing. And that's what I encourage everyone else to do. All right, Higuera trying to get out of the mess. Here's Spike Owen. 3-6 for Spike Owen against a lefty. That's a 1-6 to six double. 17. It's a single two stars and outscore Sullivan. So he would have scored from second or third either way. It wouldn't have mattered. And now the Red Sox have put four runs on the board. Off of Higuera all of a sudden. They've exploded for four runs. Spike Owen will have to be held. He's not going to go anywhere, but he will hold him on. And now here's Boggs. 4-9, and that is a strikeout. So he strikes out Boggs to end the inning. But it's a profitable one for the Red Sox. They put four in the fourth. It's a four-score Abraham Lincoln inning. They do it on four hits. No errors and one left. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's now 4-2 to Boston. And Bob Stanley now. Maybe he can get some new life that he's got the lead. So Bob Stanley will be pitching. Or is that only two outs? That's only two outs. I'm, good thing I got the computer up. I'm, I was ready to cheat them out of an out. Not intentionally, but just not paying attention. It's only two outs, folks. Not three outs. So I may have to add something to that score if Marty Barrett does something. So Marty Barrett is two for two. One seven, and this he grounds a short this time though, so it's going to be a fielder's choice six to four. And now we can close the book on the inning, but I want to get it right, obviously. Don't want to make silly mistakes, so now we go to the bottom of the fourth. Good thing I had the computer up there, or I would I would just kept the inning going, or went on to the bottom half of the inning and not even paid attention. Computer is keeping me honest. All right, here's Bob Stanley, the Gantner. 3-3 three, three for Gantner, and that is a fly to right field. One away. Dale Swain is your batter, the shortstop. He doubled his only time up. 3-11 is a ballpark, I'm sorry, 3-11 is a ballpark blast. Ballpark home run blast, but that's a 19 so that's going to just be a deep fly to right field. Four out number two as Evans hauls it in on the track. And Stanley got away with one there. Here's Paul Molitor. He's 0 for 2. His Molitor popped to first and grounded to short. 3-7, and that's a walk. So a two-out walk to Molitor. And he's going to be looking to run to try to get in scoring position with two outs. He needs a four through six to get the lead. Four through six will get him the lead. That's a six, so he's got the lead. He's a 19. The quotient is a minus three, though. Drops him to a 16, then two being held is a 14. One to 14, he'll steal it. And he does. Paul Milder, first stolen base of the season. And he is in scoring position. He will be held at second as he runs at a 17. So Milder... First stolen base of the season on the 87 season. He stole 45 bases, only caught 10 times. Stanley now facing Robin Yount. Clutch situation. 4 9 uh, for Stanley is a single to, I'm sorry, I was looking at 6 9. 4 9 is a 1 for a triple, single two stars on 2 to 20. The single two stars will produce the run, so the stolen base by Milder was key to get scoring position. And the single from Yount scores him. Otherwise, it would have been first and third. But instead, he scores, cuts the lead to four to three. 
And now Robin Yount will be held, but he won't go anywhere. His success rate not quite as good as Mahler. So it's a 4-3 to three game now. And Glenn no brags, just facts. Trying to put even more on the board for the Brewers. 5-4 is a fly ball center field X. That is Mr. Henderson. He's a 2, but he's an E16. So that could be interesting. 2, he'll probably get to it, but the E16 could be problematic. 2 and a 10, he will get to. It's an F2. That would be the third out of the inning, but he's got to avoid the error. On an E16, he's got to avoid 3, 4, 7, 16, 14, 16, and 18. So there's like six different numbers he's got to avoid. That is a 14. E16 and a 14. He does not avoid it. That's a two-base error on Dave Henderson. Look at it again. He's an E16. That's a 14. Center field, E16. A 14 is right here. It's a two-base error. So the inning will continue. Yount will take third. And Braggs is on on an E8. Two-base error by Dave Henderson. So Stanley should have been out of the inning, but he's not. The inning will continue for Greg Brock. Now, Brock, first base is open. They could pitch to Robodeau, but Robodeau's 2 for 2. Brock is 0 for 2, even though Brock has a better average. So they're going to go ahead and pitch to him. Stanley to Brock. Clutch situation. 2-2, two -two, and that's a ballpark blast. But that's a 17, so it's just going to be a deep fly to right. And that's going to end the inning. So once again, Stanley saved by the spacious ballpark rating for Milwaukee County Stadium. So the Brewers get one, and that's it. They do it on a hit and a big error. And two left. The run was earned because the run scored before the error occurred. So the run was earned. So it's four to three after four go to the fifth and it'll be Bill Buckner to lead it off against Teddy Higuera. Four to three. Buckner. One for two. Two four against Higuera. He's going to ground it to first base. Greg Brock will take it to the bag himself. One away. And it brings up Jim Rice. He got all that mess started last inning with the single. Leadoff single started the whole thing. 2-2 two -two against the lefty is a, a triangle chance. So 1-18 is a single. 19-20 lines out. That will be a single for Jim Rice. He is 2-2. Two for two. He will not be held, obviously. And Don Baylor, who is 0-2, steps to the plate against Tiguera. Nothing on the Havoc. As I drop one of the D6s, that can happen sometimes. Guerra, 6-7 against a right-hander, struck him out. So he strikes out Baylor for the second time. Two away, and it's going to bring up Dewey Evans. 0 for 1, a walk and a fly to left. Nothing on the Havoc. Guerra to Evans. 5-6. 1 to 12 is a double. That's a 9. It's a double. Question is, can Rice score? He was not being held. So it makes him a 1 to 12 with two outs. It's a 1 to 14. Plus 2 from Yount is a 1 to 16. 1 to 16, they're going to throw for it. And if Evans takes third, so be it. But they can't just let him score without at least trying. And it's a 1, so he's going to definitely score. And taking third on the throw will be Dwight Evans. But with two outs already, it may not even be that big a deal. They were trying to get the runner, but Jim Rice will score on the RBI double from Dewey Evans. And the Red Sox now lead it 5-3. to four, five to three. And that will bring up Hindu with two outs. Higuera's got to bear down. The bullpen is active for the Brewers. 5-8, and that is a strikeout. He's not tired yet, so the strikeout is good. And it's going to end the inning, but the run does score. And at the end of 
four and a half. It's Boston five, Milwaukee three. So in the bullpen for the Brewers, loosening in their pen is Chuck Krim. Chuck Krim de la Krim. He will be loosening in the bullpen just in case they decide to make a move on Higuera. Right now it is Billy Joe Robido trying to make a move on Bob Stanley. 2-7, and he does not. He strikes out. One away, and that's going to take us to Rob Bombardier. Speaking of strikeouts, struck out 186 times in the 1987 season. Stanley to Deer. 4-7 off of Stanley. Ground ball second base X. That's Barrett. He's a 2-E-11. A 2-E-11 for Barrett. 2-E-11. 2 and a 1. That evil D20 comes up with a 1 again. I'm telling you, it's loaded. That's going to be a single. And he's an E-11, so he's got to avoid five, 15, 17, and 18. And he does that, but that, that dastardly one on the devil die comes through as a base hit for Deer. And Barrett is protesting. But Deer will reach first nonetheless. He will not be held. Actually, he will be held. He has to be held because he's got an asterisk there. And if they don't hold him, he's going to get the lead. So they're going to have to hold him. He's not going to go anywhere, but they're going to have to hold him. They don't want to give up carte blanche on a lead. Here's Schroeder. Stanley, 1-6 to Schroeder. Struck him out. Two down. Now it's up to Jim Gantner. Up to Mr. Gantner, who is one for two. 3-9, and he's going to walk. That's going to keep the inning going for Dale Swain. And now the tying runs are on base for Dale Swain. Clutch situation. Stanley to Swain. 2-7, struck him out. So Bob Stanley strikes out the side through all that mess and comes through for his team. Keeps the Brewers off the board. And at the end of five innings, it is five to three Red Sox. Teddy Higuera. Boy, they might be considering making a move here. Let's take a look and see who's got length. Of course, Basio does because he's a former starter. But Chuck Krim is as well. They're going to make a move to the... Tom Treblehorn is going to the pen. He's going to bring in Chuck Krim. Or Chuck Krim de la Krim. On the 87 season, he was 6-8 and eight with a 3.67 ERA. So Chuck Krim will be coming on and will give the... Down and dirty totals for Teddy Higuera. So Krim will be the first out of the bullpen for the Brew Crew here in the sixth inning. Higuera is going to go five innings, and I'll use the computer to. Uh, well, I got first of all, I got to make the substitution in the computer, and then I'll go to the box score and let the computer do the work for me and give me the totals on Higuera. And for Teddy Higuera, he goes five innings, nine hits, five runs, all earned. Walked two, struck out six, and he's set to uh, take the loss unless his team can come back to tie this game or take the lead. So Chuck Krim will be facing Mark Sullivan, Spike Owen, and Wade Boggs to start the top of the sixth. He's a minus two is Chuck Krim. Schroeder's a plus one, so his quotient, pitcher quotient hold is a minus one. So Krim to Mark Sullivan. 3-9. I guess a right-hander is a fly to left field. One away. And that will send up Spike Owen. He's one for two. 2-9. Two 
There's a pop out to first. Greg Brock is there. Two down. And they'll flip the order back to Wade Boggs. It's 0 for 2. Walk, strikeout, and a grounder to short. 110 against a right-hander is a single to center field. So Wade Boggs, his first hit of 1987. They knew that wouldn't take long. He's not going to be held, obviously. And here's Marty Barrett. Crim to Barrett. Nothing on the Havoc. Barrett is two for two, or two for three, rather. Two seven, and he's going to hit a ground ball to third. Milder will go the short way with it for the fielder's choice to end the inning. So nothing doing for the Red Sox at the top of the six. No runs a hit, no errors, and a man left. We go to the bottom of the six still. 5-3, favor the Red Sox. Now Stanley's up. This is his fatigue inning. So have to be cognizant of that. And he's going to face the top of the order, Molitor, Yount, and Braggs. Red Sox might see some activity stirring down there. Looks like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it looks to be Steve Crawford, a right-hander. Loosing in their bullpen, or is it, or is it West, where well, their bullpen is just terrible. That's one of the reasons they were bad in 87, because of their bullpen. Nobody in the bullpen has an ERA under 4.41. And except for Chiraldi, everybody else is over 5. So since we're in, boy. Yeah, Steve Crawford is loosening the pen. He's got a 5-3-3 ERA, but, I mean, that's about one of the best they have in the bullpen. So Steve Crawford is loosening just in case. Just in case Stanley gets fatigued or ineffective. Five se or both. 5-7 is a ground ball shortstop X. That is Spike Owen. He's a 3-E-17. Spike Owen, 3-E-17. I know I'm playing this a little bit slower than I normally do on live streams and stuff, but this and this particular project, is, for whatever reason, I feel compelled just to take my time and be more methodical. So hopefully you guys don't mind that. Three and a ten is going to be a G2, which is good enough. Base is empty, and it's E17 at shortstop, and he has to avoid he has to avoid 15, 16, and 17. That's pretty simple. Avoid 15, 16, and 17. And he does. It's the 13th, so Spike Owen will make the play. One away. Big out to get to keep Molitor off the base pass. He's actually 0 for 3 in this game. Here's Robin Yount. 2-9 for Yount. He's going to ground it to Spike Owen again. This time an easier ground out. 2 up and 2 down for Glenn Braggs. Len Braggs. 2-8 for Braggs, and he's going to ground to short. All three outs go to Spike Owen. How about that? All three ground outs, and Bob Stanley keeps full. He keeps his full endurance because of that. So we go to the top of the seventh. It is 5-3, to three, and since we're at another end of a three-inning block... I'll check the focus again and check on Tabby and stretch my back and everything else. And uh, then we'll get going with the top of the seventh. Tabby's kind of doing her grooming, so she, we're not going to bother her for while she's doing her grooming. Uh, let me stretch my back. That felt good standing up for a second. Focus looks okay, as far as I can tell. Steve Crawford's still in the bullpen just in case. Just in case. Stanley runs into issues in the bottom of the seventh. He'll be ready. Krim, he's got a relief of three, so he's definitely in good shape fatigue-wise. And that'll bring up, not Greg Brock, that'll bring up Bill Buckner. It's not an inter-squad game. This is Bill Buckner. 6-6. Six, six. Krim against the lefty is a single. So Bill Buckner, his second hit of the game. And for the Red Sox, that's their 11th hit. They have pounded out 11 hits in this game, all singles and doubles. In fact, it's eight singles and three doubles. So death by a thousand paper cuts, apparently. 
Buckner, of course, not going to be held. Here's Jim Rice. Krim, 1-6 to Rice, struck him out. Gets the K on Mr. Rice. Brings up Don Baylor. Nothing on the Havoc. Krim to Baylor. 5-8, and that's a pop-up to second base. Jim Gantner is there. Two away. And that'll take us to Dewey Evans. He had a big double his last time up, RBI double, to give him an insurance run. One, so it's a chance of a wild pitch, and we'll check Krim's wild pitch rating on the computer. And his wild pitch rating is a three. Box is a three, and wild pitch is a three. So that's no wild pitch. He will have it blocked by Schroeder. And here's Dewey Evans. 6-5, 1 to 2 is a triple, 20 is a single, so single two stars for Dewey Evans. Sends Buckner hobbling over to third base. Runners are on the corners with two outs. Now we're in another clutch situation for Dave Henderson. Evans will not be held at first. Krim to Henderson. Hindu 1 for 3 with a double. 6-7 again, the exact same. Well, that was, that was, I think it was a different role. But 6-7 right here is going to be a single to left field. That'll score Buckner. And Evans will stop at second base with the ball, hit the left field. So he will stop at second base. But the RBI single makes the score now 6-3 for Mark Sullivan. And... I'm sorry, not Mark Sullivan. That was Dewey Evans at bat. Wait a minute. Did I miss that? What did I do here? I'm trying to remember what I did. All right, Evans singled. Oh, Henderson. I didn't write the single one for Henderson. That's what I didn't do. That's where I was That's where I was off. I didn't write this. I wrote the run, didn't write the single. So it is Mark Sullivan's bat. So Krim has faced nine batters now, and is going to face Sullivan for the second time. And now a six to three. That's a one, so it's a one to three for a wild pitch. And there is no wild pitch, so Krim to Sullivan. Six, nine, and that's a ground ball second base C. Throws to first to end the inning. But the damage done, a run comes in. And we go to the seventh inning stretch. And that's going to be all for Chuck Krim. His day is done. They will go to the pen. Probably for left-hander John Henry Johnson, most likely, in the bottom half. Red Sox are going to start with Stanley, but Crawford is right there just in case. But Stanley did so well last time, they're going to give him a chance to pitch this into the seventh and see what he can do. Is a seventh inning stretch. I don't have any music or anything, so I just stretched at the end of six. So I think I'm good for the rest of the game as long as we don't go extra innings. So we're going to sally forth. And here is Bob Stanley. 2 9 to Greg Brock, and that's a ground ball to first. Buckner will take it himself, one away. And that'll send us to Billy Joe Robito, two for three from the DH position. Five, eight, left-handed. There's a line out to short. There's a dot there, but he's not tired. So the line out is good. Spike Owen snares it two down for Rob Deere. Oops, Sue a dice on the 20, so let's reroll everything. 2-7 for Deer is a 1-16 single. That's 6, so it's a 2-out single for Deer. His second hit of the game. Keeps the inning going. And that'll bring up Jimmy Gantner. Jimmy Gantner. Deer not going to... I'm sorry, Schroeder, not Gantner. 1, so it's chance of a wild pitch. And I think Stanley... Let's check his wild pitch rating again. It was a four. So wild pitch rating of four. Whoops. No, no wild pitch. It's blocked by Sullivan. So here's Stanley to Schroeder. 
five, ten. Ballpark single check. That's a nine, though. The single check only goes to six. Liner to short ends the inning. So Stanley has pitched six innings, uh, set through seven innings. I think they're going to cap Stanley at seven innings. He's done yeoman work for them. And they may go to somebody other than Crawford. Looks like Joe Sambito, a left-hander, is actually going to be the one coming in for the Red Sox. Joe Sambito. He's the only lefty they have in the bullpen. And speaking of bullpen, the Brewers are going to have to go to their bullpen here in the top of the eighth. And they will go to left-handed relieving John Henry Johnson. He does not have a Strat card. So I had to print one for him. So we're going to use this printed card. John Henry Johnson, a left-hander. First of all, we'll get the final numbers on Stanley. He went seven innings. So I'll go to the box score and get the final line on Stanley, who's looking to get the win here on opening day. He goes seven innings, nine hits, three runs, all earned. He walked three, struck out three. And again, he is in line to get the win. Chuck Krim went two innings, gave up four hits and a run. No walks and a strikeout. And now John Henry Johnson, left-hander. The only other left-hander Brewers has is Dan Plezak, and he's a closer, and you're not going to bring your closer in when you're down 6-3. to three. So John Henry Johnson will get the call. Johnson on this season was terrible. 0-1 with a 9.57 ERA. He didn't pitch very long, which is why he didn't get carded. So, but you got to use them eventually when you're doing a full season replay. They got to come up, and when you're down six to three, that's usually a good time to use them. So, Spike Owen, switch hitter. You got Spike Owen, switch hitter, and Boggs a lefty. So that's a good reason to use them. And then two uh, two batters later, Buckner's a lefty. So, if we get to Jim Rice, there'll be a a, a right-handed pitcher coming in to take his place. Johnson now two. Eight for Spike going against the lefty is a ground ball to third. And, of course, if you can get Johnson's results to come off the batter card, that may be all the better. So Spike Owen is out of there on the 2-8, grounds it to third. Milder over to first, one away for Boggs. He's one for three. First to bat against the lefty, 4-2. That's a strikeout. I don't know how well it shows up on the camera there. But 4-2 is a strikeout on John Henry Johnson. 4-2 is a strikeout. So Wade Boggs has struck out twice in this game. Both off the pitcher card. That's one of the disadvantages of the 50-50 is you get people striking out more than they should. But that's just the way the nature of the business. Is Marty Barrett. Johnson to Barrett, 4-11 against a right-hander. That is a single. Single for Marty Barrett. Would have been two stars, but nobody was on base. So Barrett now, 3 for 5. And that will bring up Buckner. Barrett will have to be held, but he won't go anywhere. The uh, hold rating is a minus 2 for Johnson, so that's going to make him a minus 1 on the quotient. So here's Buckner. Johnson to Buckner. 4-7 against the lefty is a walk. And that's going to be it for John Henry Johnson. They can't afford to take any more chances. Not with the power hitting right-handers coming up. So the Brewers will make another call to their bullpen. Another call to the bullpen. And this one's going to be a call to mark crystal clear clear in 1987 was eight and five with a 448 era so mark clear is coming in for the brewers to try to get this final out of the eighth inning and if he does so he'll probably pitch the ninth inning as well Clear on the season. Again, 8 and 5, 448 ERA. 
And he had six saves. He actually started a game as well, but don't know when that is, but right now it is clear. And we can't close the book on John Henry Johnson because he's responsible for both runners. We know he got a walk and a strikeout, and we know he pitched two-thirds of an inning, gave up a hit. Don't know about the run. So Rice is up with in a clutch situation, two on, two outs. And clear your pitcher to Jim Rice, who's two for four. Three five for Rice, and that's bad news for the pitcher. One to ten is a home run, but that's a 20. It'll still be a double. Double to center field for Jim Rice. That will score Barrett. I don't know about Buckner. He doesn't run all that well. He runs at an eight. With two outs, it becomes a 10, not being held as an 11. Center fielder Yount is a plus two is a 13. One to 13. But I don't think you want to push Buckner. So they're going to hold him at third base. I mean, you've got a 7-3 to three lead. Why, why risk injury there? So it is 7-3. to three. It's the 15th hit by the Red Sox as they have pounded Brewer pitching. And now here's Don Baylor. First base is open, but Evans is right behind him. Baylor's 0 for 4. So not going to intentionally walk him. They're going to go after him. Clear to... Baylor, 4-6, and that's a strikeout to end the inning. So he can close the book on John Henry Johnson. He gave up the one run to go with his hit and walk. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. It's now 7-3. Seven 7-3 to three. Seven to three the score. And now the Red Sox will bring on a new pitcher. Coming up for the Brewers, it is going to be Gantner, Swain, and Molitor. So let's see, do they want to go back to Crawford, or do they want to... It's not a save situation, so they're saving Chiraldi. Boy, what do they want to do with this? They're going to go to... Well, they're going to go to... They're going to go to Joe Sambito. The left-hander, former Astro closer back in the day. So Joe Sambito is coming on, and he will be facing the bottom portion of the order, Gantner, Swain, and Molitor. On the bench for the Brewers, if they want to pinch hit, they do have a couple of right-handers. Jim Pashorek is the only right-hander, but they got two switch hitters, Castillo and Felder, if they want to switch, if they want to hit for Gantner, who was 272, but and he hits fairly well against lefties. Hmm. Let's check their bench. Look at their hitters for the Brew Crew. We're not going to use Beshork. He was 228. Steele, 224. Felder, 266. They're going to pinch hit with Mike Felder. Mike Felder will pinch hit, and Juan Castillo will come into play second base. So that's it for Gantner. Gantner's going to leave. So the pinch hitter is going to be Felder. But the new second baseman is going to be Castillo. And he is going to be a 3E21 as a second baseman, running as a 15. All right, so let's add, put these changes in the computer. Got multiple changes going on. So Joe Sambito is your new pitcher for the Red Sox. Sambito in the 87 season was 2 and 6 with a 6.93 ERA and 38 innings pitched, 46 hits, 16 walks, 35 strikeouts. And now for Jim Gantner, we have the pinch hitter, Mike Felder, who's got really good speed. So he's a good leadoff man. Mike Felder. So Felder will be the pinch hitter, and now Castillo will take over at second base for Gantner. All right. So Felder will lead off the bottom of the eighth of a 7-3 to three game against Mr. Sambito. 
three three against the left hander is a ballpark. S I'm sorry, it's one three. Three three is a ground ball to short. One away. So he failed in the pinch hitting duty. And once again, Spike Owen, another assist. He's got quite a few in this game. And here's Dale Swain, number nine hitter. Not going to pinch hit for him. He's a very good hitter. 5-8, switch hitter batting right-handed. 5-8 is a walk. So Sambito issues the free pass. Swain will not be held. And here is Paul Mahler. Calvin Chiraldi is loosening in the bullpen for the Red Sox. They don't want this one to get away. Sambito to Mahler. 2-4 for Molitor is a ballpark single check. That's an 8, though, so it's a line out to short because it had to be a 6 or less. So he lines it to short for out number 2. Two down. Now it's up to Robin Yount. Sambito looking to get pitch a successful 8th inning. 4-3, and that's a fly ball left field X. That is Rice. He's a 4-E-7. Maybe Red Sox should have brought a defensive replacement in, but they did not. Could have brought in Greenwell, but they didn't do it, so they're going to have to pay the consequences perhaps. But that's a 20, so he gets to it with an F-3. And he's an E-7. So an E-7, you got to avoid 6, 15, 16, and 18. And that's 11. It's just fine. Jim Rice makes the play. He says, why are you worried about me making a defensive play? Why do you want to take me out? I'm good. And so is Joe Sambito. He pitches a scoreless eighth, much to the dismay of many Red Sox fans. So now we go to the ninth inning with the score still 7-3. to three. And now Castillo will come in and play second base after Gantner was pinch hit for by Felder. Clear will stay in the game. And Clear will be facing Dewey Evans, Dave Henderson, and Sullivan here in the top of the ninth. It's not a safe situation, but they might bring Chiraldi in anyway just to just to make sure something doesn't get away from him. Clear, 111 to Evans. That's a fly out to right field. One away. And that'll send up Dewey, or Dave Henderson, rather. Hindu. Clear, 6-4. Catcher X. Haven't had a Catcher X all game. We got it now. Schroeder is a 4-E-3 on a Catcher X. But nobody's on base, so he should be okay with that. Just has to avoid a 1, which he does. So a 9-9 nine, nine is a pop-out. Unless he drops it. And he is an E3. So he only drops it on a 3, 16, or 18. And that is a 12. So he will make the catch. Or out number 2. And that will take it over to Mark Sullivan. Two six for Sullivan is a strikeout to end the inning. So Clear does his job. He goes a total of one and looks like one and a third. I don't need the computer for this one. One hit, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. So we go to the bottom of the ninth, last chance. Oh, I forgot to write in Sambito here. Sambito went one inning. He did walk a batter, but gave up nothing else. And now, does McNamara go to Chiraldi, or do they go to someone else since there's not a safe situation? Only the manager knows that. And actually, they're going to go to, they're not going to go to Chiraldi. They're going to go to West Chauncey Gardner, see if he can get the save. And if he struggles, Chiraldi is in the pen waiting to go. He is all ready to go. No question about it. And I looked at Greenwell in the outfield. He's he's 
worse than Rice, so they're going to keep Rice right where he is. So Wes Gardner will be coming on to pitch. Like I said, it's not a safe situation, but if he gets in trouble, they will go to Chiraldi pretty quickly. And he's going to be facing Braggs. The schedule here, Braggs, Brock, and Robodeau. On the bench for the Brewers, they do have B.J. Surhoff and Rick Manning, so they could be pinch hitting here in the ninth inning. So first things first. We go to the new pitcher, Gardner. He will be on. And so officially, in 1987, Gardner was 3-6 and six with a 5-4-2 ERA and 10 saves. He did have 10 saves, so even though his ERA was high, he, he certainly had experience closing ball games. So it's going to be Braggs to lead it off, followed by Brock, and then we might get a pinch hitter for Robodeau. They might use Surhoff to pinch hit for Robodeau. We'll see. 6-9 against a right-hander for Gardner. That's a 1-4 home run. That's a 1. It is gone. Glenn Braggs just greeted West Chauncey Gardner with a home run. Let's look at it again. 6-9 against right-handers is a 1-4 home run. And the devil die comes up as a 1 once again. Keep telling you, it comes up more than one more than it should. And there it is. It's now a 7-3, 7-4 game. And now it is a save situation if someone else comes in. Not for Gardner, but for the next pitcher. But right now they're going to stick with Gardner. It was just one at bat. So here's Greg Brock. 3-6 for Brock. 1-2 to two is a single. That's a 1 again. How many times can a 1 show up? It did it again. Two times in a row. And I think Wes Gardner is pissed because he says, what the hell with this number 1 stuff coming up? And I think he's giving the D20 the finger. No, telling D20 it's number one. How about that? So now we're going to the bench for the Brewers as Robodeau is being called back. And they're going to a pinch hitter. And it's going to be B.J. Surhoff, a 299 hitter, as opposed to Robodeau, a 194 hitter. Almost a no-brainer there. So Surhoff, and he'll stay in the game to DH in case... You know, they, they tie the score, and it goes extra innings. He would be here for that. So Surhoff is in. At least Manning and Pachoric are the only two pinch hitters remaining for the Brewers. And again, in the bullpen for the Red Sox, they do have Chiraldi loosening, and they may be calling on him very quickly. But right now, Gardner is going to face Surhoff. Surhoff again on the 87th season. Hit 299 with seven home runs, 68 runs batted in. Runner at first, Brock not being held. Nothing on the havoc here is, and Gardner's a minus five hole, by the way. It's a 3 7, and that's a double. 1 to 10, 11 to 20 is a single. That's a single two stars. And that's going to move Brock to third. Runners are on the corners, and that's going to be it for Gardner. He can't get anybody out. They're going to have to go to Chiraldi right now. They can't mess around. So Gardner doesn't get anybody out, gives up three hits and a run. And so far, one run, no walks, no strikeouts. But Calvin Chiraldi is now coming on in a definitive save situation. With 2-1, nobody out. It is 7-4. The tying run is now at the plate in the form of Rob Deere, who with one swing of the back can tie this game. So the move is made to the bullpen by McNamara. Probably regretting he didn't bring in Chiraldi from the start. But he's in there now. And Chiraldi on the 87 season. 8 and 5, 4 4 1 ERA and 6 saves. And Rob Deer is your batter. All right.
right. West, uh, so West Gardner is out. And Calvin Chiraldi trying to come to the rescue before it's too late. He is in. Several diamond shots on Chiraldi's card as well. So neither runner is being held because neither one of them runs very well. Their runs really don't mean anything. It's the runners that plates that's the tie and run, so they don't want to run themselves out of the inning. Red Sox playing back. They need outs. They'll give up a run to get two outs. Chiraldi, 2-7 to Deer. 1-16 to is a single. That's a six. It's a base hit. That run will score, and it's charged to Gardner. Stopping at second is Surhoff. RBI single from Deer. The lead is cut to 7-5. to five. And that brings up the catcher, Bill Schroeder. So the Brewers trying to get some ninth inning magic, so to speak. Chiraldi, nothing happening. 4-6 for Chiraldi. Struck him out. A huge strikeout for Chiraldi to get that strikeout. And now here's Juan Castillo. He's only a 224 hitter, but he's the only second baseman they have left, so they have to use him. They have to use him, no choice. So Castillo is your batter against Chiraldi. Three nine, and that's a walk. So Castillo walks to load the bases, and things get a little bit more in intense here in County Stadium. John McNamara squirming in his seat. And that brings up Dale Swain. The tying run is at second base. The winning run is at first with just the one out. Computer is saying Chiraldi is tired. I just don't see how that can happen. I'm not counting. He only faced three batters. There's no way in the world he'd be tired. So I don't know where they're getting that from. But I'm going to ignore that. All right, here's Dale Swain. Infield looking for the double play. 2-3 for Swain is a walk. He's going to force in a run. Chiraldi brings in the run. Now he can close the book on Gardner. He's given up all three runs. But Chiraldi not doing much better on his own. It is now a 7-6 game with Paul Molitor coming up. The base is still loaded, only one out. And now Steve Crawford is loosening in the bullpen. They might have to go to Crawford because Chiraldi can't do it. So Chiraldi is going to be called out. And they're going to Steve Crawford to see if he can finish the game. Steve Crawford is in. Chiraldi couldn't get it done, so now Crawford is in. Fifth pitcher used by the Red Sox. Chiraldi goes a third of an inning, gives up a hit and two walks. And he's responsible for all the runners. He can lose it, for sure. If the Brewers come all the way back, he would be the losing pitcher record. It's 7-6 to six now. With only one out, the base is loaded. So now you got to figure out, whoops, now you got to figure out, do you play the infield back for the double play, or do you play the infield in? Because they, you know, a ground ball B or whatever ties the game. And I don't think there's a lot of Milders will be tough to double up. So they're going to play the infield in. They are playing the infield in after some discussion. A mound visit from, well, while Crawford's out there before his warm-up tosses, they had a conference as to what they're going to do. And they have decided to play the infield in. All right, infield in, bases loaded, 7-6 to six our score now. Nowhere to put Milder, the bases are loaded. There's been two walks in a row. Crawford, 4-9, fly ball right field B, it's a sacrifice fly, and we have a tie game. That run is charged to Chiraldi. He's got a blown save to his credit. And we'll also see on a fly ball B, the runner on second has a chance to go to third on that. So Castillo, he runs at a 15, 
plus 2 is a 17, but then you take the arm and it's a minus 4 is a 13. So 1 to 13, he would make it. 14 to 19, he holds. 20, he's out. And he's got, he does make it to third base. So Castillo tags up and takes third base. So the winning run is now at third base. The winning run is at third base. And we got a tie game at seven. Wild one here in Milwaukee. For sure. It is tied at seven. And now Dan Plesak is loosening the Brewer bullpen. He would pitch the 10th. If it goes to the 10th, he would pitch that. If the Brewers win it, Mark Clear would be the winner and Giraldi would be the loser. And it would be a, quite a comeback. They've already scored four here in the ninth. They're going for their fifth run. Runners are at the corners with two outs for Robin Yount. Ninth man to bat in the inning is Yount. Braggs is on deck, and he let off the inning with the home run. Here's Crawford with two outs now, trying to get Robin Yount and send this game to extra inning. 5-5, five, five, he does. It's ground ball, second base C to end the inning. And we are going to free baseball. It is seven to 7-7, seven, and you can clear the slate of all the pitchers. And they're pitchers of record now. Chiraldi is now off the hook. Chiraldi is off the hook. And we go to the top of the 10th, and coming on will be Dan Plezak. He is their closer. And when you're the home team in extra innings, you can't get a save anyway, so you might as well use him. So Dan Plezak coming on. That leaves Basio and Ciardi, the only uh, bullpen arms for the Brewers, and Woodward, the only bullpen arm for the Red Sox. And Spike Owen is your leadoff batter to start the 10th against the left-hander. Dan Plezak, 5-6, and 6, 2 6 one ERA, and 23 saves. Dan Plezak. Now the Red Sox have not used any of their bench yet, so they could maybe think about perhaps making some moves here. Spike Owen's a 259 hitter. Romero is 272. He's actually a better defender. They're going to pinch hit with Romero in, t in place of Spike Owen, and Romero will stay in the game to play short. He's a 3E10 versus a 3E17. So Romero with the lefty in there. Romero will come in, and he will be the new shortstop. Be the pinch hitter and then the new shortstop. Spike Owens' day is done. So let's make that move on the computer, and then I've got to stand up and stretch again and check everything. So Romero gets the call. 7-7. Seven to seven. seven runs, 15 hits, and one error for the Red Sox. Seven runs, 13 hits, no errors for the Brewers. And before we start this top of the 10th, Tabby is just sitting here relaxing, being quiet, so I'm not going to disturb her. I'll make sure focus is okay. I'll double-check it, make sure. Looks like it is now. If it wasn't before, I think it was okay before. But we're ready to go. Here in extra innings, free baseball, as they say. Didn't think this was going to happen in this game. 7-7. Seven to seven. It'll be Romero, Boggs, and Barrett due up for the Red Sox against the closer, Dan Plezak, who's just trying to get it to the 10th inning. Romero, the pinch hitter, 3-8. Fly ball center field, and Romero flies out. One away, and here comes Wade Boggs. And if I run out of room on the score sheet, at least I've got the computer to keep score on, so... Not a total loss. Here's Boggs against Plezak. 5-11 for Plezak is a walk. So Wade Boggs draws the walk. You're not going to substitute Wade Boggs. I'm sorry. 
I don't care how slow he is, you're not going to substitute for him. Here's Marty Barrett. Boggs not being held. One chance for a wild pitch for Plezak. His wild pitch rating is a 15. So that's bad news. This could send Boggs to second base. And it does. That evil D20 camp is a one again. And now the go-ahead run is at second base with only one out for Marty Barrett, who's already got three hits in this game. Plezak facing Barrett. 5-7 against a righty. Ground ball shortstop X. That's Swain. He's a 3-E25. 3-E25 for Swain. Whoops, wrong chart. 3-E25 for Swain. Can he get to it? For 3, nobody's being held, so he needs a 5 or higher to get to this. And he does. A 9 is a G3, so his only play is to first. But you got to worry about the E25 as a shortstop. He's got to avoid 4, 13, 17, and 18. That's 5. It's a rare play. That's just what they needed was a rare play. It's a G3 rare play. How about that? So we come over here, G3 rare play. Batter lines a shot that hits the mound and deflects the fielder who makes the play to first for the out. That's not very rare, but whatever. So... He's out. We'll call it uh, one to six to three since the pitcher may have deflected it. But Boggs will take third base. So Boggs is at third with two outs for Bill Buckner in a clutch situation, obviously. Billy Buck. Plezak to Buckner. 3-7 for Buckner against the lefties. A ground ball to first and handled by Brock to end the inning. And Plezak pitches out of that stuff. And we are going to the bottom of the 10th. Ed Romero will take over at short for the Red Sox. And Steve Crawford stays in the game to pitch, obviously. He hadn't pitched that much. And Plezak may very well pitch another inning as well. Crawford. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm the wrong thing here. Should be Plezak. So Crawford. He's pitched one full inning so far, it looks like. Is that right? Pitched two-thirds of an inning. I'm sorry. Pitched two-thirds of an inning. And he got two outs. Geraldo got one out. He got two outs. So he pitched two, he's pitched two-thirds of an inning so far. So he's still good. He's got a fatigue of three. And he's going to be facing the guy who homered to start the bottom of the ninth. If he homers again, it'll be the ball game. Glenn Braggs. Bottom of the tenth. Tied at seven. 2-9 for Braggs. This time he's going to ground to Wade Boggs. And there's one away. One down for Greg Brock. Brock going to be followed by Surhoff because he's the new DH now, not Robido. So I need to put that in there. Surhoff on the score sheet, so I know that. All right. 4-7. Against the lefty, ground ball, second base, X, that's Barrett. He's a 2-E-11. 2-E-11 for Marty Barrett. 2-E-11. Two and a one. That evil D-20 comes up as a one again. It's a base hit. Make sure there's no error. He's an E-11. He's got to avoid 15, 17, and 18. That's an 18, so he doesn't avoid that either. Gets the double whammy. That's a two-base error. So it's a single and a two-base error on Marty Barrett. And that's going to put the winning run, Greg Brock, at third base. So he singles here and then an E4, two-base error on the E4. How do you like that? So 
So runner at third with one out now for Surhoff, and they're actually going to intentionally walk Surhoff. There's no reason in the world to pitch to him. And they'll take their chances with Rob Deer. So runners at the corners with one out for Rob Deer. Crawford can use that strikeout. Infield is in. They could definitely use a strikeout. There's a bunch of strikeouts on Deer's card. But we're going off the pitcher card. 5-5 five is a ground ball, second base C, but the infield's in. So hold the phone. First and third. Ground ball C is a three. Batter out, runner advances one base. Oh, it's infield back, my bad. First and third, ground ball season eight. Batter out, runner on third holds. Runner first advances to second. All right, so it's going to be a ground ball. Barrett throws to first. Serhoff will take second on the play, and the runner, Brock, will have to hold. Now there's two outs with runners at second and third for Bill Schroeder. Castillo on deck. Schroeder's a 332 hitter. They could intentionally walk him too, but that would load the bases, and that means a walk would walk in a run. But Schroeder's a 332 hitter. Castillo's only 224. Boy, hate to walk. Well, first base is open, so, you know, I don't think it really matters that much. Second intentional walk of the inning, but all these intentional walks could force Crawford to be wild. But they they got to do what they got to do. Bases are loaded two outs now. It's all up to Castillo in a clutch situation against Crawford. 1-6, and that's a 1-4 to four single. That's a, The evil D20 comes with a 1 again. That was a 1 again. It's a single, and the ball game is over. The evil D20 strikes again, and the Brewers win it in walk-off fashion by the score of 8-7. to seven. And the Brew Crew still have a chance to repeat the 13-0 start they had in real world. And they do it in dramatic fashion here, 8-7. to seven. And i got to catch my breath and stretch and come back with all the totals of this wild one. I'm going to pause the video, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back to wrap up this wild one here from Milwaukee on opening day. Much wider than the... Uh, Baltimore, Texas game that was played just before this. But Milwaukee comes back with four in the ninth, and then they walk it off in the tenth to win it eight to seven. Eight runs, 14 hits, no errors for the Brewers. Seven runs, 15 hits, and two errors for the Red Sox. Winning pitcher Dan Plezak, he's 1-0. and oh. Steve Crawford, the loser, he is 0-1. Oh and, and like I did for the Baltimore game, I, when I paused the video, I went downstairs and printed the box score we just played. And there you can see what is done. Player of the game, I'm giving it to Glenn Braggs. He hit the he hit the home run in the bottom of the ninth to start the bottom of the ninth that really triggered the rally. And I I just think he and he also had a a throw out of a runner at third base. If you remember, he threw out going from first to third in the first inning. He threw out Marty Barrett going from first to third. May have saved a run right there. That would have been runs on the corners and only one out. And this fly to center might very well have scored that run. So I'm giving the player of the game to Greg, or I'm sorry, Glenn Braggs. And Braggs had the only home run of the game. Two costly errors by the Red Sox. Brewers left 15 on base. The Red Sox left 11 on base. So there you go. Next game on the schedule for opening day 1987 will be at Tiger Stadium. It'll be the Bronx Bombers, the New York Yankees, and Dennis Rasmussen taking on Jack Morris and the Detroit Tigers from Tiger Stadium. So I hope you enjoyed this wild one as much as I did. Kind of wore me out playing it, actually. And uh, Brewers win. They go to 1-0. and uh, Tie with Baltimore now in the East at 1-0. and Red Sox drop to 0-1. And... Uh, they certainly felt like they let one get away they shouldn't have. And uh, that's just the way it goes. So I do appreciate you spending your time uh, watching this with me all the way through, those that made it all the way through. And uh, until next time, 
Enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play. However you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.